May 7, 2024 will mark the day that fans quickly turned on Phil Spencer and Xbox as we saw the shutdown of not one, but four iconic video game studios. This of course caused a ton of layoffs of talented developers from iconic studios, two of which produced some of my favorite horror games of the last generation that I was still holding out hope for sequels of. Unfortunately, the shutdown of these studios all but confirms that we'll probably never see follow-ups to these iconic video games. Regardless, this devastating news got me thinking about some of the horror games out there that more than likely for one reason or another will also never get sequels of. From standalone games that confirmed a sequel before the company filed for bankruptcy to franchises that seem to be long dead and forgotten, there's plenty of horror games out there that we will unfortunately never get to see a sequel of. Before we get started though, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to my channel if you like the content that I bring you guys. Oh, and I really want to do something that's a little different for today's video, guys. So if you can, please send your thoughts and prayers over to the developers affected by the layoffs. Sadly, it's something that we continue to hear again and again, and I hope that one day we get to a place in time where game developers are rewarded for their hard work, not fired to make the shareholders happy. Anyway, my name is Ruben with Nerdspace Games, and this is my top 10 horror game sequels that will probably never see the light of day. Let's get it. Number 10, The Medium 2. Out of all the entries on today's list, this one is probably the one that most people are not that sad about. Considering that The Medium was rough around the edges and barely featured any gameplay, a lot of us probably don't care too much about never getting a sequel to it. With that being said, I do think it's unfair to take shots at Bloober Team's first attempt at a survival horror game, and I don't think it's fair to not give them any second chances. I mean, The Medium did do some things right. The atmosphere of the game was pretty spot on, and in some regards, was similar to the feeling of the atmosphere of other iconic survival horror games like Silent Hill. Plus the mechanics and the visuals of going back and forth between two different realities with ease was something that was extremely impressive to experience. The game had a lot of potential, but just fell flat. Unfortunately, the gameplay lacked any real combat seen in traditional survival horror games, and the story was kind of boring. But seeing that Layers of Fear delivered excellent storytelling, and depending on how Silent Hill 2 turns out, perhaps Bloober Team could redeem itself with a sequel if they ever got a chance. Sadly, that's unlikely as the game was basically torn apart, and I doubt Bloober Team will ever be given the opportunity to revisit the franchise after the backlash it received for the first and probably the only game of the franchise. Number 9, Eternal Darkness 2. Talk about a game that had so much potential but was filled with non-stop bad luck in terms of a sequel being created. For those that never experienced this hidden gem, Eternal Darkness Sanity's Requiem was a survival horror game released exclusively on the GameCube. To this day, Eternal Darkness remains as one of my favorite survival horror hidden gems out there thanks to the interesting story, gameplay, and most importantly, the sanity meter. See, Eternal Darkness introduced a new mechanic that would actually play tricks on the player if this sanity meter ever filled up. Stuff like pretending to turn off the TV or creating iconic jump scares are just a few of the features explored with the sanity meter. To this day, the game stands out as a cult classic for fans of classic survival horror games who continue to hold out hope for a sequel one day. Unfortunately, that may never come to be. For many reasons, actually. For one, the game didn't perform well at all. Which, when you think about it, that shouldn't be too surprising as it was released the same year as two Resident Evil games. RE0 and the 2002 remake of the original game. Still, even with the game performing badly, the developers behind it, Silicon Knights, announced that a sequel was in the works. Sadly, this never came to be as Silicon Knights ran into legal troubles with Epic Games, which resulted in the company filing for bankruptcy. But in 2013, another sequel was greenlit with Kickstarter funding and a new studio created by the founders and head designers of Silicon Knights, which was under the working title of Shadow of the Eternals. Between a lack of crowdfunding and one of the founders of the new studio being arrested, this sequel was also cancelled. To this day, Silicon Knights and Nintendo owns the rights to the mechanics and the sanity meter and the Eternal Darkness IP, but with all the issues that continue to come up each time a sequel is announced, and with Nintendo releasing less and less first party horror games, chances are that we'll never get to see Eternal Darkness 2. Number 8, Bloodborne 2. So I'm actually putting this one pretty low on my list because out of every other entry here, Bloodborne 2 has at least a small chance of being created one day. Still, I'm sure this one hits hard for all of you Soulsborne gamers out there, but I have to be real with you guys. 
I honestly don't think that we'll ever see the day where we get Bloodborne 2. Even if by some miracle we did get a sequel to this iconic gothic horror Soulsborne game, there's no way it'll be developed by FromSoft and there's no way it'll be as good as the first game if that's the case. With that being said, a Bloodborne remake isn't completely out of the realm of possibilities. In fact, it's probably extremely likely, especially with Bluepoint being successful at remaking titles like Demon's Souls and Shadows of the Colossus. So why do I think Bloodborne 2 will probably never happen, but a remake might? First off, FromSoft has been pretty vocal about not having any motivation to revisit the game despite it being near and dear to their heart. Technically though, Sony owns the rights to the Bloodborne IP and making a sequel to this game would mean that it'll need to be a PlayStation 5 exclusive and I just don't see FromSoft going that route anytime soon. They've also been pretty open about wanting to explore more fantasy routes, like with Elden Ring, then exploring the more horror focused monsters and creatures of horror stories straight from Lovecraft and Bram Stoker. And without FromSoft on board for a sequel, chances are pretty low for another studio to take on the project. Number 7. Hunting Ground 2 With a lot of entries on today's list, you'll notice that a big reason why a sequel is very unlikely in most cases comes from one of three things. The loss of the IP, the developers moving on to bigger and better things, or the closure of the studio behind these games. However, Hunting Ground is a unique exception to this. Its problem comes from all of the competition that it faces within its own studio. See, Haunting Ground was developed and published by none other than the king of survival horror games, Capcom. I mean, just from the Resident Evil games alone, Capcom really doesn't have any time to bother itself with smaller sequels to games that are long gone and forgotten by casual gamers. And even if they did, take a look at Capcom's catalog for survival horror games. Do you really think that the Haunting Ground 2 will happen before any of these other IPs? I mean, people have been demanding a remake to Dino Crisis, and I'm sure if any survival horror game gets any attention from Capcom that's not Resident Evil, it would be that franchise. On top of that, Fiona's story in Haunted Ground is pretty much closed, and if a Haunted Ground 2 ever did happen, it'll probably be in the form of how Clock Tower games turn out. Regardless, with the long list of Resident Evil games still demanding remakes, potentially a total of 5 RE games in development, Dino Crisis still demanding attention, and the countless of other Capcom owned properties that are not horror related, chances are that we'll never see the day where Capcom revisits this diamond in the rough. Well, unless they license out the IP to a different studio, which might be possible, but again, I wouldn't hold out too much hope for that. Number 6, Forbidden Siren 3 or 4? I say Forbidden Siren 3 or 4, but I guess technically this would be a third game as one of the entries was actually a remake. It's actually kind of confusing. Regardless, the Forbidden Siren games are some of the slower and more unique survival horror games out there. In this franchise, players are given a psychic ability. While exploring the different areas of the games and avoiding the enemies, players can choose to mind hack. This ability will allow them to see things from the perspective of the enemies. It's a unique and terrifying mechanic that could create some of the most thrilling encounters seen in horror games. Unfortunately, the franchise has never really done well in terms of sales. And even the reception from fans, especially in the West, were mostly negative. For that reason, after Blood Curse released, the latest entry of the series and a reimagining of the first game, the team appeared to pretty much give up on the franchise and Project Siren instead moved on to Gravity Rush and Gravity Rush 2. Meanwhile, the head of Project Siren, whose name I am going to completely butcher, Kichiro Toyama eventually left the team to create his own studio, Bokeh Game Studio, in which the team looks to release its first game, Slitherhead, sometime in the near future. Considering his background for creating both the first Silent Hill game and the entire Forbidden Siren franchise, it's highly unlikely that Sony, current owners of the Forbidden Siren IP, will greenlight a sequel unless Toyama agrees to come back and direct it. So between the departure of Toyama and the fact that these games never really performed well in terms of sales, it's extremely unlikely that we'll ever see a fourth game of the franchise. Well, maybe if Silent Hill 2 sells well and Sony sees that the money is there for a good quality survival horror game, then maybe, maybe we will. Number 5. Prey 2 As I said at the start of the video, Microsoft made a horrible decision to shut down four talented Bethesda-owned studios. One of which was Arcane Austin, the development team behind one of my favorite sci-fi horror games ever made, Prey. If you never got to play this last-gen sci-fi horror game, then I highly recommend that after this video is over, you go and play it right away. 
Prey puts you into the shoes of Morgan as they are exploring a space station full of creatures with shape-shifting abilities. These creatures, aka mimics, can shapeshift into just about any inanimate object in the area, from mugs on a table to trash cans and chairs. These creatures will disguise themselves in order to catch you off guard. It's a game that's not really considered a horror game, but honestly, it's one of the scariest sci-fi horror games out there. You know, outside of Alien Isolation and Dead Space. Unfortunately, even before the shutdown of Arcane Austin, chances of this game ever getting a sequel were already slim. That's because Prey underperformed drastically due to the lack of marketing. Or, in my opinion, the lack of correct marketing. See, the game was never really advertised as a sci-fi horror, but in fact just a random first-person shooter, which honestly didn't really do any favors for this game. Still, between the lack of sales and now the closure of Arcane Austin, it seems like the nails have officially been hammered into this coffin. Number 4, Alien Isolation 2. Speaking of Alien Isolation, that's another sci-fi horror game that will probably never see a sequel despite it being one of the best survival horror games ever created in my opinion. And funny enough, it shares a lot of the same issues that Prey 2 has. The first being the lack of sales for the first entry. According to Creative Assembly, the team behind Alien Isolation, the game had only sold 2 million copies and in their eyes was a complete failure. Considering the fact that it used a giant IP like Alien, hearing that 2 million copies sold was not very profitable in their eyes isn't that surprising. Especially when you take into consideration the cost of the IP itself along with the likeness of actors like Sigourney Weaver and Ian Holm to create similar characters for this game. Unlike most developers, Creative Assembly has also been pretty vocal about not working on a sequel to Alien Isolation for multiple reasons, including the lack of sales I mentioned already being one of the main reasons. Even if Creative Assembly did decide that Alien Isolation 2 was something that they wanted to tackle, the sad truth is that it would probably be nowhere near as good or even remotely similar to the original game. That's because most of the developers and the head designers that created Alien Isolation are no longer with Creative Assembly. On top of that, I can't see Sega taking a massive risk on a big budget game like Alien Isolation 2 when they've seen how hard it could fail. So between Creative Assembly wanting nothing to do with a sequel, Sega probably not wanting to take a risk on it, and the completely new team at Creative Assembly which barely has any of the head designers and developers left that worked on the original game, chances are that we'll never get to see Amanda Ripley's story continue. The best that we could hope for at this point is maybe a VR version of the original game. Number 3, Parasite Eve 4. Here is a survival horror franchise that has completely gone dark since its last entry and honestly, there is little to no hope that it will ever see the light again. Parasite Eve was a unique combination of two different genres of video games that on paper wouldn't work, yet it remains one of the most creative and unique survival horror experiences to this day. Developed by Squaresoft aka Square Enix, Parasite Eve was a survival horror franchise that combined RPG elements with the up and coming subgenre of survival horror. Instead of using traditional combat scene in most survival horror games, the player would use a mechanic similar to that scene in typical turn-based RPGs of that time. However, for casual gamers and casual fans of the franchise, they were unaware of the fact that these games were actually based on a novel with the same name. The games were technically sequels to the events of the novel with both games, especially the first, recounting events that occurred in the novel. Aya Brea was a character created specifically for the video games as the main protagonist of each game. Unfortunately, due to Square Enix losing the license of Parasite Eve, the third game departed from the storyline seen in the first two games. Because Square only owned the rights to Aya Brea and not Parasite Eve itself, the third entry even lost the Parasite Eve title and became known as simply The Third Birthday. Fans have demanded a remake of the franchise, but even that would prove to be difficult as Square will have to work hard to get the license back in order to remake the original game. And considering that the writer of the Parasite Eve novel was not a fan of the direction that the games took, chances are that's not likely to happen. So with that in mind, it probably makes more sense for Square Enix to instead reboot the series with a fourth entry that pulls away farther from the storyline of the first two games. However, that's an issue on its own that would mean that the fourth Parasite Eve game will share the same issue as the third did. They couldn't use the name Parasite Eve. Unfortunately, with all of these issues combined, it's unlikely that Square Enix will even bother with a remake or a sequel. 
we have a better chance at Square just completely creating a new IP that shares similar characteristics that we saw in Parasite Eve. But again, even that becomes a difficult task considering that Square has announced that they are going to be more careful about the games they choose to work on after revealing that they suffered a $140 million loss due to content abandonment. So with Square Enix probably focusing on more bigger franchises and more guaranteed success, it's pretty unlikely that we'll ever see them take a chance on a new Parasite Eve game or even a similar project as this franchise. Number 2, The Evil Within 3. This breaks my heart more than any other entry on this list, mainly because it's still fresh and it's a franchise that was very near and dear to my heart. As I stated earlier at the start of today's video, Tango Gameworks was shut down by Microsoft in favor of them focusing on big budget IPs that have a better chance of success. Unfortunately, the closure of Tango Gameworks all but confirms that The Evil Within 3 will probably never happen now. Taking a look at the first two games, the Evil Within series has some of the most creative and interesting concepts. From some of the best boss fights of survival horror games to probably one of the best told stories in horror games. The Evil Within franchise had so much potential and it's a damn shame that the company behind it is now officially closed. If I'm being honest though, the Evil Within 3 was always a pipe dream, even before Tango Gameworks was shut down. Firstly, while the first game performed well, the second installment was a massive disappointment in terms of sales. Like with other Bethesda owned properties that weren't Elder Scrolls or Fallout, I blame the lack of marketing on it. So rather you enjoy the changes and mechanics, the story or the inclusion of a semi open world, The Evil Within 2 was considered a flop in terms of sales. But when Shinji Mikami, creator of the first Resident Evil, its 2002 remake and even the first Evil Within game, departed Tango Gameworks early last year, the chances of an Evil Within 3 were even slimmer than before. But of course, the final nail in the coffin was when Microsoft announced that they were closing Tango Gameworks and focusing on bigger IPs. On top of that, while other developers from other studios were being repurposed for other projects within Bethesda and Xbox, nothing was said about the developers of Tango Gameworks. Unfortunately, this means that more than likely most of the team will be moving on to different studios, which all but confirms that the Evil Within 3 will never happen. Right now, the best case scenario is that these developers team up with Mikami to create a new IP that outshines the Evil Within franchise. But with Mikami and Bokeh Game Studios focusing on Slitherhead and the fact that Mikami has been open about wanting to try other genres outside of the survival horror genre that he helped create, it'll probably be a while before we see these developers get a shot at creating anything even remotely similar to the Evil Within. Number 1, Love for Dead 3. The first Left 4 Dead game completely took the gaming world by storm as it became one of the most successful and best asymmetrical horror games ever created. Keep in mind this was even before Dead by Daylight took over the genre. I still remember the amount of hours I would spend online with friends as I played through the multiple scenarios of the game, both on the hardest difficulty and even online versus. Personally, I was a massive fan of the online versus as it was a unique and exciting experience every time I played it with some of the best enemy AI created in the form of the horde of zombies that would be different with each playthrough, Left 4 Dead and its sequel provided more hours of gameplay for me and my friends than most games out there. Straight up, I think I spent more hours in these two games than any of the Resident Evil games, which is actually saying a lot considering that I'm a massive RE fan, if you couldn't tell already. Unfortunately, after the second entry and despite the overwhelming success that the series had, a third game would never see the light of day. The developers behind the Left 4 Dead games, Valve and Turtle Rock, would split up with Valve retaining all rights to the series. Turtle Rock would go on to try to recreate their success with Back 4 Blood, but were unsuccessful due to the lack of balancing, gameplay, and basically everything else that made the Left 4 Dead games exciting and addictive. Valve, on the other hand, has been more vocal about not working on a Left 4 Dead 3 despite rumors and leaks appearing every now and then. This theory was proven even more so when Valve released fan-created DLC back in 2020. Considering that Valve chose to release DLC on a game that was 11 years old instead of just creating a third entry, basically confirmed that they have no interest in making a Left 4 Dead 3. And considering that so much time has passed since the last entry of the series, it seems like Valve has given up the idea completely on even considering an idea of doing a sequel to this game. But that's it for today's episode of Nerd Space Games. Hit up the comments and let me know what you think of my list. Is Left 4 Dead 3 the best horror game sequel that will never see the light of day, or is there a different game out there that deserves that title? Anyway, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to my channel for more survival horror content. 
Also, leave a like in today's video if you enjoyed today's topic. But thanks for watching, and as always, I'll catch you guys on the next episode of Nerdspace Games. Take care.